Okay, today we're going to be dissecting a crayfish. This is in uh, the group Crustacea. So come on in and let's go over some of the external anatomy. So we have two main body sections in the crustacean. We have the head and the thorax that are fused together in something we call the cephalothorax. And then we have the abdomen. So those are the two main sections, cephalothorax and abdomen. In terms of positions, we have the anterior end and the posterior end, the dorsal surface, and then the ventral surface. Okay, we have a number of legs here. And one thing that's unique about uh, the class Crustacea is they have branched appendages, and you can see that it has little like pinchers on the end of their, their legs. And huge, big pinchers, these are called chilipeds. Okay. I also know that on the ventral side, to identify what uh, gender it is, you look for these little claspers, the presence of claspers, and if it has claspers, then that would be a male, and they're modified swimmerettes to hold on to the female. Okay, and then here are the rest of the swimmerettes, right here on the ventral side of the abdomen. Then it has a tail. Uh, the tail is called a telson and each little subunit of the tail is called a uropod. Uropod. I didn't call you a pod, it's just this is a uropod. Okay, I'm glad we got that straight. Here right here is the, the anus, right here, this little opening right here. And as we move anteriorly, we're gonna find the mandible. So I'm gonna pull this apart right here and these little hard uh, chitinous pieces are called mandibles right here. And I'm putting my probe in between the two, the two mandibles. All right, let's go ahead and turn it over and take a look at the dorsal surface now. So we have the eyes. That won't be a hard one to, to visualize. And right in here we have the rostrum, this little piece between the eyes, the rostrum. And they have four antenna or the, the little two, the teeny ones right here, those are called antennules, and these are antenna. And they are involved in sensory, helping them to detect their presence of other things and to sample the environment. Then another thing I forgot to mention here is the piece that, that covers, that goes dorsally and laterally on either side of the cephalothorax, that's called the carapace. So this whole piece right here is called the carapace and we said the chilipeds. Well, the first thing you need to do, and we want to look at the internal structures, and these are, um, we're going to easily get to it if we have to remove the legs on one of the, the sides. So I'm going to place the legs here on the side. Remove this big chilipeds. Then we're going to take scissors. We're going to be using scissors in this dissection instead of a scalpel. We want to hold um, the cephalothorax. We're going to put the scissors in at an angle here that way um, I can get underneath this, this carapace and go over the top here, just right next to the rostrum. So as I clip here, I'm going to hold on to the body and be very careful of the head so that the head does not come off. Okay, so I'm going to keep cutting. You can hear that chitinous exoskeleton crunch as I'm clipping. Okay, so I clipped all the way across starting here laterally, going dorsally, and laterally on the opposite side. So now we want to see the internal structures here in the cephalothorax. So I put my fingernail underneath, and I'm going to pull the covering off. Remember, the covering is the carapace. So I'm going to pull that off nice and carefully. And sometimes when we pull that off, the stomach will come out with it. So let's see if we can, if we can do that. Oh, happy days. There we go. So the stomach came right off. There's the stomach with the carapace. An interesting thing about the stomach, it has something called the gastric mill in the stomach. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the stomach open here so that you can see the gastric mill. There's these little chitinous teeth actually inside there. Okay, and I think you can probably see that pretty good. You'll see those little chitinous teeth. Three right there. I'm gonna set the stomach 
right off to the side there. Okay, I'm going to take a look here. Here's the mandibular muscles. These are the muscles that power the, the mandibles. Okay, and there's a little bit of stomach still left right here. Okay, so I'm going to try to remove that leftover portion of the stomach so that we can get up and see this cerebral ganglia. So I'm going to set that off to the side. And it's going to be hard to see because of the lighting, but at least I'll show you the, the location so you can see it. And you can see the mandibular muscle really good now. And I'm going to put my probe underneath the two nerve cords that are coming right out of the brain or the cerebral ganglia. So I got my, my probe right under there. So just anterior to that then would be the brain. And it's right here. I know it's hard to see. There's a little fluid there. But the light's not going to probably allow us to see that. But it's right here anteriorly. And I can see it from my angle. Now we have uh, some gills. So here's the gills. Because this organism has to remove the respiratory gases from the water. And the gills over here on the opposite side as well. Okay. Then uh, the digestive gland sits right here. It's just posterior to um, the stomach. So the stomach resided right here and we can see the the digestive gland that would release enzymes to break down the food that it eats. These are scavengers and they they love to hunt at night and they're a lot of fun to catch and and uh, fresh uh, crayfish can actually be quite tasty. Okay now right here is the heart and sometimes it comes off with the carapace resides right in here but I'm going to remove the heart now with the probe I'm going to put it, um, my probe into one of these little openings. Now as I tug on that, see right here, I can pull that out really, really easily. And that's the heart. And the circulatory system of the crayfish is, a, is an open uh, system, not a closed system. So that means it pumps the blood into to sinuses or spaces and it's picked up by vessels and goes back into sinuses and spaces. But very efficient for these small organisms. So I'm going to place the heart um, right here next to the carapace. So I uh, don't want to lose that. Don't want to be, a, be heartless here. We can see easily where the heart went, the digestive gland, mandibular muscles, the nerve uh, cords right here, uh, the brain, the rostrum, the eyes, and tenules, and so forth. So let's take a look at the part that we actually um, eat when we are consuming fresh crayfish. And to, to see that, what you need to do is carefully hold uh, the telson, which remember is made up of uropods. Oh, here goes that word again, uropods. So to, to remove the top portion or the dorsal portion of the abdomen, you need to hold on to the telson, slip the scissors in here, because if I slip now, it's going to go in this way and it's not going to get me. And I'm going to clip laterally here. Okay, and I'm going to just grab in and pull that off. I'm going to remove the dorsal surface. Remember, I'm cutting through that, that exoskeleton. Again, if I take my, my fingernail, get under there, and I'm going to remove that. I'm just going to pull it open like this. Very good. Okay. Now, doing that, I'm exposing the muscles that, that power this little tail when it swims. If you look carefully, this is the muscle right here that that is actually consumed. It's a, it's a powerful little muscle. And so that's the, the muscle for flexion. So when the, the crawdad is doing doing this action, okay, it's, it's using that large powerful mu muscle okay, to swim backwards. When it extends its little abdomen, okay, it's using its extensor muscle. So the flexor muscle is this piece right here and the extensor muscle is right along the top part of the the exoskeleton of the abdomen. So it's all this stringy material right here. That's muscle for the extending uh, that. Okay, up along the top, see this little tube? That's the intestine, right along the top. Then I'm going to remove the muscle. I'm going to kind of pull it to the side. 
and see if we can see the ventral nerve cord. Now it'll be hard to see, um, but if you can get in here and with the camera and possibly see it, right here's the ventral nerve cord. I've got my probe right underneath it. There you go. There's the ventral nerve cord. And that covers uh, all of the parts that um, we'll be looking at. Today uh, we had finished, finished up dissecting a crayfish.